Hugo Tail Yax was stabbed while saving a woman from a mugger. Not a single person who passed by helped. He died an hour later. And although one of many cases, it's things like these that make you feel that it's all crumbling apart. War, murder, greed, oppression, this is all we ever see. What's a man supposed to do? How do you get people to be good to each other? Recently, a dear friend of mine in Georgia has passed away. It was a suicide. And all this shit piled up. I didn't know how to cope and all I thought was, fuck, if only I was more positive and more loving, things wouldn't have been so hard. All I felt was afraid and alone and scared. Love was the only way out. So like the hippies of the 60s, I decided that I would stand for love so that someone out there could fucking know that it would be okay on this fucked up little planet of ours. And I needed help with that, so I sought the guidance from the ever-positive, ever-loving people of Centro Cultural de Mexico at their monthly open mic night in San Diana. I think um, people don't realize like how powerful we can be when we control our thoughts, once we are a, a, a observed. Like we become aware of what our thought process is, and then we realize how powerful we are that we get to choose them. Like we are not slaves to our thoughts, we are not slaves to the external condition, we are not slaves to our emotions. You know, Bob Marley says, um, none but ourselves can free our mind. And you know, like, um, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves can free our mind. And that's where anger is like also like be you know, born from as well, from fear. I mean, if you're like afraid of something, usually like you don't get like sick of being afraid of it, right? So then you don't get angry at it. So then you don't want to do something to that fear, right? You're beautiful, powerful, one of a kind, not, a, not alone, love. Free hugs. Hey, do you want a free hug? Do you want a free hug? Free hugs, anyone? Free hugs. Free hugs. I'm thinking of myself as like pure essence and, and you're pure essence and there's no reason for judgment. So if I don't even go there, it doesn't exist. Fear and love is like the way that, that life is divided up as far as I'm concerned. Like there's only one choice in life in everything that you do. You know, you're either coming from a place of fear or you're coming from a place of love. You're doing it something because you're scared that if something that you don't do this, something bad will happen, or you're doing something because you feel very empowered with your choice and it works for you. So, you know, I just look at it like that in everything I do, but it's it's you know, it's a balance because we're surrounded by fear and fear based tactics, whether there's religion or politics right. or society that pushes, you know, us to be scared of ourselves, to be scared to like liberate ourselves, like and be the best that we can be and, and, and find our identity identity and individuality through our creativity and whatever it may be, you know, whether it's cooking, whether it's dancing, whether it's singing, whether it's you know, poetry, writing. There's so many ways that we can like convey like our spirit, our uniqueness. And, but we get caught up in the madness and the fear. But once we start cho choosing love, once we start like, you know, finding true love within and without, all around us and being able to experience that love in different ways, not just sexual, but physical, you know, and through the vibe, through the good vibes that, you know, through conversations, through, you know, hugs, through pumps, like that's, that's what's good, man. The, your ability to like find love and experience love in so many different ways with, with so many different people. And that's what's gonna change people's lives. So it's just, so it's going to change the world. So we're spreading mad love right now. Uh, you want a free hug? Oh, what the hell? Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Awesome. Have a good day. Huh? You want a free hug? Sure. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. Thanks, Took man. A bad day today. Thanks, man. Take care. How nice. Thank you very much. I'll take one too. Want. Thank you. Good work. Thanks. Good work. Thank you. Sure. Why not? What the hell? <laughs> hey, hugs are healthy for you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'll give you a hug. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Are you all ready for the holidays? Oh, that was so sweet. It's nice to see people still do that.
I used to think people don't even, I just, just met, I ran into a stranger at the post office just now. And she was so down on, out on her luck and just, I helped her with a couple of things and gave her a big hug. It just made her night. Like she has, I guess has an alien husband at home, so, but see, that's all it took. Oh, God. After we gave hugs, we decided to be neighborly and bake cookies for the people in our community. We had been wanting to make a love rally of sorts, so we saw this as an opportunity to invite our fellow human beings to a day of celebrating each other. One thing led to another, and I created a Facebook page in hope that we could start a movement of love. Let's see what the cookies is. It's chocolate chip cookies. Uh, it's old? No, I made them. They're, they just got kind of crushed. Oh, you just made them? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You, you want one? Um, Thank you. Do you want one? Do you guys like a free cookie? Yeah. They're freshly baked. No. No. Okay. Huh? Do you want a flyer to a love rally? Uh, okay. Here. Oh, wow. Oh, it's okay. I'll just take a flower. Yeah, oh. I just bought something. Thank I just you. Made them. Oh, it's okay. Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. We're having this um, love rally at the Great Park. I'm trying to get all these people to come together and just have like a, yeah. a day of love. I don't know, like poems, music, food. Cool. Stuff Hopefully like I don't have work or something. Yeah. Thanks. Here. Thank you. Listen to your friend. <laughs> sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Here, we also have a, a love rally, if you're interested in going. After know, passing out hugs, cookies and flyers, we felt a sense of hope. Although what threw us off was this distrust and alienation in some people. We decided we needed to understand this sort of fear a bit more. So we interviewed a Nazi, the epitome of fear, to give us some insight on this perspective of alienation and see what he thought of fear and love. I keep myself up to morals. I try and keep pride myself in being a good person. I don't hate. I mean, I got tattooed across my belly, but I don't, I don't necessarily hate. I don't actually believe in the, the idea of a bad person. I don't think anyone's born a bad person. Everyone has some way of justifying in their own minds what they do, somehow being right. But uh, I don't like Jews because they're the supreme evil in this world. I don't like niggers. Um, because they are stupid. Um, Mexicans, I hate to sound like a typical Orange County skinhead, but Mexicans I don't have that big of a deal with. Gooks, I don't like any fucking Asians. Their cultures are back fucking ass words. I don't know any other culture in the fucking world where if you see someone getting stabbed down the street, it's wrong to help them. I don't see any fucking culture where like if you fucking get raped you should be shunned by your family. I'm a violent sociopath I don't really f feel anything other than like happiness and anger so I don't really know. I think they're pointless emotions or something like that I guess. Fear just fucks you up and there's no such thing as love. Sounds, sounds dark I guess but it's true. Don't you love your mom? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. How do you feel towards her? I like her more than anyone else in the world, I guess, which is like love. I don't know. I think there's like a different kind of love between like someone like you want a bone and then someone who's a family member, you know what I mean? Or is it like the same kind of love or something? Love is just a general feeling. You don't have to put it in different forms. I don't know. I miss my mom. I wish I could see her more often. You know that phrase, check yourself before you wreck yourself? Yes, sir. Ooh. I updated it. Ah. So, don't wreck yourself, respect yourself. Gather and collect yourself and protect your health. Because health is important. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. 
Why are you stressing? Life's a blessing. So quit obsessing about perfection. All you need is a direction to set yourself in, and then focus on progression, not perfection. Interestingly enough, Scott's declaration of being unable to feel love lost ground when we brought up his mom. I was a bit happy to see his life wasn't all loveless, but how could we help him love more? With one week left before the love rally, I took Tom's bomb diggity words of advice and set myself in a direction I felt would help and went to give free hugs once more. Did you take a shower? Yeah. Okay. You okay? He gives me plenty of hugs. To our surprise, we didn't get any hugs this time. Tensions were high and morale had dropped to an all time low. All I had left to look forward to was the love rally. Would you like a free hug? <laughs> no, but thanks anyway. Would you guys want a free hug? Oh, it's okay. Would you like free, a free hug or some help with your groceries? Would you guys like a free hug? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> love. And then it came, the love rally. And to our dismay, only a few friends, our instructor hero, and families with hungry children stopped by. And you know what? It was the best fucking time ever. Yeah, yeah, I did this all for the world. But most importantly, I did it for myself. I did it for my friends. I did it for us. At least at that point in time, all was good with the world, and love was truly shared, expressed, and felt. I know my friend would have loved it. I know I did. And maybe that's all that matters. Like the great Charles Bukowski once said, you save the world one person at a time. Who knows? Maybe in 50 years, this will mark the start of a whole new movement. Only time will tell. <clears throat> and what about our world? Was it really so bad? I wanted to see if I had been the one on the ground would someone come by to help. And you know what? It only took three minutes. Hell, after these people left, it only took two minutes for the cops to get called. Fire trucks and all. Maybe my city wasn't so heartless. I mean, yeah, they were confused and scared. But I don't think they were heartless. Not in the least. You live here in Irvine? Yeah, I do. I live up across the street. Is there a sidewalk you could lay in your own house or apartment complex that maybe it wouldn't draw so much attention? Oh, probably. Well, what do you think about fear and love? Like, what do I think? Yeah. Generally speaking? Hmm. They're both emotions that are deprived from a perspective that you can only be the one that can hold. You have the perspective of love and what that definition is, and you have the perspective of fear and what that definition is. There is no one right or wrong answer. Everyone brings to the table their own perspective. And only that person can define what love is to them, and they can only define what fear is to them. That's it. That's my perspective. Yeah, like, have you ever, like, lost someone and then sort of felt like you, sh like, you wish you would have, like, said more of course you always regret you know. what you can't have and what you can't do and what you can't obtain yeah like it's human condition that's true yeah like i think i don't know there's people out there who just never have no one has ever told them that they love them or that they are loved you know again that's and you're, perspective yeah you're right that is a perspective but do you think we share like a collective consciousness of sorts though I think anything's possible, man. There's a lot about our, our anatomy and our abilities 
that I'm sure 50 years ago we would be told by the smartest man or the smartest people in the world that could never happen, that happens on a daily basis. It was interesting to hear the cop talk about love as relative, then say that the human experience and collective consciousness were existent absolutes. Although contradictory, he was a representation of the boundaries holding many back from being love. Was it possible to level with a man whose profession didn't enforce trust but fear? Somehow this time it was. In the face of death, fear and shock can paralyze, change a man, for better or worse. And with the death of my friend, I just wanted to change the world. It was the only way I could cope. I couldn't stand and let people be afraid any longer. I wanted to stop my world from crumbling by empowering it with love. So here it is. This is my message in a bottle for those who need it. You are loved. Be love. It will truly set you free. Fear will always be part of life and it's okay to be scared. Love is just a remedy. Sometimes it can be scared to love. And you will be knocked for it. But fuck it. Slavery is comfortable. Freedom is a struggle. I want a hug. Oh, you guys want a hug? Yeah. Group hug? Group hug. Group hug. Your hands are cold. Your face is cold. This is really weird. <laughs> I didn't think it was weird. I think it was there you go. Sensational. I think so the shirt makes it.